Thanks a lot, John, and uh, thank you all for the warm welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I am, uh, I'm representing Jim Heppelman, our CEO. Uh, he would have liked to have been here. Uh, he loves this topic. He loves this event. Uh, but unfortunately, he got called away on business. So, um, you know, big shoes to fill, but I'm, uh, I'm happy to, uh, to have the chance to share our story with you. And, and what I'm going to talk about today is um, a lot of the research that we've been doing on the topic of augmented reality. Uh, as John said, we're a commercial software company, so we think a lot about the business value that augmented reality can deliver. And um, there's been a lot of research done um, to, uh, to explore this and to help quantify it, to help all of us understand what the value is here. Um, this chart here shows a um, sort of the evolution of IT. Uh, if we go back to the 1960s, before then, uh, most products were electrical, mechanical, manually designed. Everything was documented in paper. Um, but of course, we had the microcomputer, mini computer, personal computer revolution. And that introduced a new wave of digital content. It introduced us to spreadsheets and um, documents, uh, word processing, and um, CAD, 3D modeling. Uh, was, was then enabled. ERP, MRP, CRM, all of those systems began to uh, impact the way that businesses and enterprises were, were run. Of course, fast forward to the 1990s, the internet introduces a whole new way of collaboration. Uh, this has a dramatic impact on the supply chain. It has a dramatic impact on how companies engage with not only their partners, but their customers. And that wave is um, what brings us up to about where we are today. So for the past decade or so, the second wave of IT evolution is the advent of smart connected products. IT actually being embedded in devices that go out into the market. This has had a dramatic impact on business. It allows companies to understand how their customers are using their products. It allows them to better service them. It allows them to better engineer the next generation because now there's a closed loop of information. And that's, that's where we are today. Um, our CEO at PTC, Jim Heppelman, and Professor Michael Porter at Harvard Business School up the road have actually written a couple of articles about what's happening today. These articles talk about the impact of smart connected products on the business, but they also talk about the impact of smart connected products on a company's organization. The walls that exist between IT and R&D and service all must come down in order for companies to get the maximum benefit here. Where we are today, though, is on the edge of the third evolution of IT. And Professor Porter and Jim have written a third article, which is exactly about the topic that we are all here talking about today, the impact of augmented reality and the recognition that augmented reality has the potential to fundamentally transform the way that we all interact with the world around us. We all understand the explosion of digital data. Um, the, there are some statistics here, but we, we, we're all experiencing this on a, on a daily basis. Um, data that's coming from social media, data that's coming from enterprise systems, the web, it's simply overwhelming us. And if we think about how people consume information around them using our five senses, it's interesting to note that the first three, taste, smell, and touch, actually represent a very small percentage of how we consume information. Hearing represents about 11% of how we understand the world around us. But it's sight, it's visual cues that influence us to the tune of about 83%. So 83% of the information that we gather, that we understand in the world around us, comes to us through our eyes. And today, more and more, that information is represented on a flat screen. Um, I, have a, I have a daughter about the same age as John's daughter, and I would say about 100% of the information she gets comes from a flat screen, but that's, uh, that's a talk for another day. Um, but if we think about that information that's presented on a flat screen, that can be very powerful. But there's a limitation when that information relates to the world around us. Now, many of you may have driven here today and you likely use the GPS, either on your phone or in your car, to get you here. And as you were driving, you were constantly mapping what's on the GPS to what you're seeing in front of you. And that effort 
is actually a pretty sizable cognitive load. That is taking away your cycles, your mental cycles, to do that mapping. You may notice if you're on a conference call, or if you're listening to an audio book, or if you're mentally preparing for a presentation, uh, that is distracting to constantly have to perform that, perform that mapping. Augmented reality alleviates that cognitive load. It allows you to present that digital information in context in a clear, compelling, digestible way. And the folks at Continental, who is a tier one automotive supplier, are actually working on technology to do exactly this. Not just a heads up display that, disp that, that gives you information about fuel and, and, and maybe your speed and the speed limit, but actual direction in context to show you clearly exactly what turns you should be, you should be making. And you can see some of the statistics here. I mean, this last point around drivers averting their gaze at 70 miles an hour for just half a second have lost 100 feet of distance on the road. Think about what can happen during that, during that time. Now at PTC, um, we think a lot about IoT. We think a lot about augmented reality. These are fundamental shifts in the world around us. And we believe these two technologies are quite complementary. So in this graphic, we have represented the physical world on the top, the world that we all live in, and the digital world on the bottom. And IoT is a path across that digital frontier, that, that, that boundary. It is a way to understand what's happening in the physical world through sensors and connectivity and represent that in the digital world. Why? So that we can contextualize that data, so that we can structure it in a way that makes sense, so that we can synthesize it, and so that we can use it to do interesting things, orchestrate digital systems, control the behavior of the physical device. But it's also very valuable to use that information and drive it back into the physical world, to present it to people so that they can be more engaged, so that they can understand things more clearly, do their jobs faster, do their jobs more safely. And this yin-yang of physical and digital and the ability to move between them with IoT and augmented reality, we believe is incredibly powerful. As I mentioned, Professor Porter and Jim have written uh, an article, um, and we actually have copies of this article outside for you. And one of the interesting things that they did in this article is they actually provided an augmented reality experience. So the readers of this issue, it was in the November issue, um, could experience that themselves. If, um, if you guys could switch in the back to my phone, uh, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here. You'll see this in just a moment. Um, in order to, in order to um, participate in this experience, you need to download an app. It's called HBR AR. It's available on Android and, and iOS. Uh, it's, it's here in the lower right corner. And when I open that app, here we go. When you open that app, it will look something like this. And uh, it tells you that um, you should be looking at a target. It's, it's, it's this page, the page you just saw on the screen. And when I hit continue, what happens is that page comes to life. So what we're looking at here is a simulated factory. The factory is sharing some um, performance data and uh, producing um, raw materials here. It looks like an outline for a paper airplane. We're moving on through some of the manufacturing steps, initial assembly, where we move from 2D to 3D. And again, there's operational data. Uh, we're then moving into an oven. Uh, and then as the product comes out of the oven here, uh, we're going through the next phase where the product is actually being augmented with a bit of uh, um, a an AR experience. And then, of course, we move on to final assembly and logistics and delivery when the paper airplane is whisked off into space. So it's a, um, it's a, it's a simple example, but for many people in the enterprise, it's their Pokemon Go experience, right? It's the first time that they're understanding in the context of the article the impact that augmented reality might possibly, might possibly have. Now, I showed you uh, this example with a, uh, with a, with a, with a phone, with a, with a, with a 2D, um, 2D device. Uh, but of course, digital eyewear is where all of this is headed. And you heard Mark talk a little bit about this as well. 
Um, there is great technology that every month gets better and better and better. Um, of course, we all want to get to the Ray-Ban form factor, and I know many of you in the room are working on that technology. Um, and in the enterprise, this is incredibly important, where we are places where we need to be hands-free, we need to perform service tax, tasks and maintenance tasks and need to have all of our, all of our facilities, uh, facilities around us. The article also talks a, a lot about the different capabilities of augmented reality and basically breaks it down into four major categories. The first is the ability to visualize something that's not there. So the most simple case where, for example, I visualize that factory. It's not really there, it's augmented, I see it in 3D, and I can um, have a deeper understanding of what it is, what it might mean to me. The next level is instruction. So using augmented reality to present information to somebody about how to perform a task. This could be for training, it could be for actual task execution, it could involve 3D information, um, or it could involve simple annotations that provide somebody instruction. Uh, those could be text or video displayed in the field of view as you're performing the task. And the third level of sophistication is interaction where augmented reality is actually used to present the human-machine interface. Think about all of the screens on all of the products that maybe are even in your home, from your washing machine to your microwave to your refrigerator. Think about all of the screens that show up in a factory or other industrial settings. Is there a way to eliminate that hardware and present the information in context of the machine itself in a much more compelling and intuitive way. Now I mentioned there are four. The fourth one is this idea that is a blending of augmented reality and virtual reality. And Mark talked a little bit about this. This idea of transcending time or space or scale. Um, think about um, visualizing the service procedure that you may need to perform on the space station. You're not there right now, but we can transcend that, present it here, and share that information with you. Think about transcending the scale so that you can understand the workings of maybe the, me the mechanism inside of your watch. Scale that right up so that that can be, so that that can be presented and, again, made much, more, made much more intuitive. The article also has um, some nice examples of each of these. So let's take a look at the second uh, experience here. Uh, the page that you see on the screen. So when I look at that page, um, I'm actually presented with a product. This is a Bosch Rexroth Citro Pack. It's a pneumatic pump of sorts. And on this page, you can see that there's information about visualize, instruct, and interact. So to visualize the product, I'm simply selecting on that blue power button there. And when I do that, I'm presented with a visualization. Here are all of the major subsystems, maybe some operating characteristics of each one of them, allowing me to understand what's inside of this particular, particular device. The, um, the next button, when I press that, will give me some instructions. So how would I replace the filter? Well, we'll have a little x-ray vision. We get a warning that the filter is contaminated and it needs to be replaced. I click on continue, and then I'm shown clear and intuitive step-by-step -step instructions for removing the cover and then extracting the filter, discard that, get the new filter, insert it into the Citro Pack, and then put everything back together again. So having never done this before, I now understand in just a few seconds exactly what needs to be done. And then finally, the last example is interaction. Now, interaction is usually digital controlling something physical. It was hard to ship a machine with a magazine, so we've augmented one here onto the, uh, onto the table. And what I can do here is I can animate that. So I can animate that at a relatively slow pace, or by sliding the slider, I can animate it at a much faster pace. So again, just some quick, simple examples to help convey the, the ideas that are, that are uh, represented here. Now, in order to really drive home the impact of interaction, um, one of my colleagues from PTC and a uh, Media Lab alumni, uh, Valentin Huen, is here. Uh, he will be giving a, uh, a talk uh, later today 
on Reality Editor. This is outstanding and breakthrough technology using augmented reality to control a variety of devices in the physical world. Not only to control them, but also to, to define those relationships in a very uh, powerful and compelling, compelling way. So we'd love for you to take a look at, uh, at, at what Valentin's working on. I'll also use this opportunity to mention, um, as John said, PTC is a local company. Um, we are aggressively investing in this space. Uh, we're doing a lot of investment organically, but we're also very acquisitive. So if you've got interesting technology that relates to what we're working on, we're always looking for great and exciting new, uh, new companies to bring into the portfolio. If you know anything about Professor Porter, um, you probably know that he is the godfather of business strategy. And his fundamental premise is that you compete and win in the market on one of two fronts. You compete by having a highly differentiated product or you compete and win by having a highly differentiated supply chain. And the great thing about augmented reality is that it has application in both of those domains. So let's take a look at a few examples. Acuvane is a, uh, is a company that provides new technology that leverages augmented reality to augment onto a patient's skin the location of their veins. So if anybody's given blood, and been poked more than once, you'll appreciate the technology that they provide. Let's take a look at how it works. So it's actually sensing, it's taking the um, thermal identification from the veins, it's understanding those and then using projection technology to show on the patient exactly where they are. So this is great for patient sat uh, satisfaction, significantly reduces complications, and works on people of all ages. You'll see here a baby's foot um, where, where the technology is being used. So this is a great example of a product that only exists because of the power of augmented reality, right? Clearly, highly, high differentiator. If we look across the value chain, this is pretty exciting as well. What you're seeing here at the top um, are the results of a survey that PTC conducted with prospective customers that are interested in augmented reality. And we asked them about their use cases. Where can this technology be applied? And what you see is very, very broad, even distribution. That's further proof that this technology is truly transformative. It's got application in all kinds of different places. So let's take a look at a few of those. Beginning at the earliest stages of the product life cycle, product design. So augmented reality and the visualization capabilities are incredibly powerful for visualizing new design concepts, either iterations on an existing design, which is what we'll, we'll see here. This is a video from Ford where they're using a HoloLens to visualize on an existing product an alternative design. So you'll see there's the product we have today, and there's the revised design. So in context of the physical product we have, we can look at all alterations. Um, very powerful when we've already got something. Now, in this case, we have a complete car. This also works if we have just the chassis of a car. And frankly, we have many customers at PTC that are using this for design review of products that don't even exist yet. So instead of simply looking at them on a flat screen, in order to understand their scale, in order to understand exactly how they'll look in 3D in the real world, they're using technology like this at, at early stages. If we move on to manufacturing operations, using augmented reality to reinvent the human-machine interface. Instead of a small 10-inch flat screen on my machine, I'm able to have a much richer experience. Here's an example from a company called Wemo. They make sheet metal manufacturing equipment, and they have completely reimagined what the operator's experience is like. Let's take a look. So in this case, again, the individual is wearing a hollow lens, so he's got digital eyewear on, his hands are free. He's got an outstanding dashboard of everything he needs to know about the machine. It's current operating characteristics, overall efficiency, but he also has the ability to control the machine. He has the ability to choose a different product to be manufactured, to start and stop the machine, to accelerate it. 
here you'll see the, uh, the product portfolio. And as he selects on the product to be manufactured, of course, the automation kicks in and that product goes off and gets, uh, and gets created. So a fundamental shift in the way that he's interacting and operating the hardware that he's, that he's, uh, that he's using. Marketing and sales is very exciting as well. Um, the ability to visualize a product in context is incredibly compelling. Whether you want to show somebody your product where they are, or we also have many companies that have large bulky products. And in order to move those products around, it's very expensive to bring them to a trade show, bring them to a customer visit. So more and more they're using augmented reality for virtual product demonstrations. A great example here of a consumer app is Azec Decking. So um, in this case, the consumer is visualizing a new deck in his backyard. And he can configure it, he can control the materials and the different colors. He sees how it will look from his home, looking out into the backyard. He's got all the different options. And then in a moment, you'll actually see he's gonna go stand by that fence and look at the home with the deck presented right in front of it. If you've bought a new television lately, if you've bought new furniture lately, you're seeing more and more of these kinds of applications where augmented reality is showing you at scale, in context, the, uh, the, 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 the product's performance. Moving on through warehouse operations into logistics. So this is, um, this is a slightly different um, uh, uh, augmented experience. This is an example uh, from DHL. So here we are putting ourselves in the shoes, or in the digital eyewear in this case, of a factory worker. And um, this, uh, this uh, warehouse worker, in fact, uh, has to get some packages. So he sees um, a, a panel in the corner that's telling him what he's got to do. He's using voice commands to proceed to the next step. He sees the pick list presented to him, and he's able to go. Uh, move throughout the warehouse. It's telling him not only where to go, aisle 17, shelf three, but also providing him specific instructions on how to get there. Again, just like the GPS. Turn here, here's the bin that you wanna go to, there are the packages that you need to collect. Of course, as he picks them up, they're automatically scanned, and we move on to the, we move on to the next step. Tremendous productivity gains to be realized in the logistics field, thanks to augmented reality. And then moving on to service. Um, service is a, uh, a domain that many companies are looking to for increased revenues, increased profits can come out of servicing existing products in the field. A great example of that is Caterpillar. Um, one of PTC's flagship customers is taking advantage of the technology that we're talking about here to improve the service worker's experience. So in this case, a, uh, a field technician, again using a HoloLens, is uh, replacing a fuel filter. So what are the current operating characteristics of the filter? Again, that information comes from a smart connected product. What, what are the schematics? How does the fuel filter work? Where does the fuel come in? Where does it go out? And how do I replace it? Very clear, very intuitive, increasing first time fix rates, increasing the efficiency of the service technician as he goes out into the field. This is a great example of a standard procedure. It's fuel filter replacement. It probably gets done hundreds or thousands of times around the world. What about the case where um, I need to provide ad hoc service? I need to provide remote expertise. So Lee and company is taking advantage of augmented reality to present information to somebody in the field in real time using a what you see or you see what I see kind of technology. Again, Mark talked about um, something called Project Chalk from PTC. Project Chalk has now been productized. It's actually available on iOS already. If you go to the App Store, it's called Vuforia Chalk. And basically, it allows you to see what somebody else sees. It allows each of you to annotate not only the screen, but actually map those annotations onto the physical world behind you. Tomorrow morning, my colleague Mark Schutz will be on the stage and he'll be talking about a lot of PTC's technology to enable what I'm talking about today. And uh, he and I together will give you a demonstration of that, uh, of that uh, Vuforia Chalk technology as well. And then the last step on the, um, on, the, um, on the life cycle is human resources training. So this is a great example for welders. 
Uh, training somebody to weld is very expensive. It can be dangerous. Um, and this company, Qwit, is taking advantage of AR technology where um, what you see in the, in the screen on the left is what the trainee sees inside of their helmet. So it looks like they're welding. And it's actually providing guidance around the angle and the speed of the welding as, um, as the trainee is, uh, is participating here. But the great thing is that it's very safe. We're not wasting any welding material. The problem with training and welding is once you've welded something, something you can't reuse it. You're kind of throwing it away. Um, so this is very, very valuable technology to them. And again, very, 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 very safe. Um, and training applies to all kinds of things, industrial settings as well as uh, creativity. Uh, ben Shani is a VP at uh, PTC in our R&D group, and he's also a musician. And he's been taking advantage of some of this AR technology to help people learn how to play the piano or the keyboard. So he's giving a uh, lightning talk uh, later today, and um, you'll see how he's using AR and different ways of presenting information to train somebody on the, on the keyboard. So another, another great training example there. Now when we think about um, deploying AR, there are lots of questions. And I'll wrap up by presenting you a framework for how to think about those questions. There are many different vectors here. Um, the first vector, and, and this is a spider chart, in the center is very simple, and on the outsides are more sophisticated. And the first vector that we'll look at are AR capabilities. So again, visualizing something, instructing, interacting. There is an increasing level of sophistication there. Another vector that we care about is the content source. Where is data coming from? Are we creating something specifically for our AR experience? Or are we reusing existing content? Existing content in the form of service procedures, 3D data, data that we're capturing with photogrammetry maybe, and then, and then using for, for, for AR. How are we going to build our, our AR experience? Are we going to um, use a dedicated set of developers, take advantage of a, an, a, an SDK like Vuforia and Unity and go build something purpose-built? Or are we more interested in scale? Is it important for us to use dynamic publishing? And this is an area, um, John talked a little bit about my background, this is an area though that, uh, that I and my team have been very focused on for the past couple of years. And in fact, uh, we have built a dynamic content authoring and publishing system as part of PTC's technology suite. It allows you to very easily reuse 3D content you have, author an AR experience in a drag and drop environment, no coding required, and incorporate all kinds of other information, IoT and other enterprise system data, and very, very easily get from concept to a real AR experience. And again, tomorrow morning we'll show you, uh, we'll show you exactly what that is and how it works and some of the latest advancements. Continuing on, how are we going to map our AR content in the real world? Is it simply assisted reality, a panel floating out in space in my field of view? Um, are we going to use an image, like many examples show today? Are we going to take advantage of spatial tracking, like ARKit? Or are we going to actually map the augmented content onto the 3D object itself? So again, some, uh, some late-breaking research uh, that we're just about to productize will be presented on that tomorrow. And then finally, what's the experience like for the consumer? Are they going to use something as simple as a phone or tablet that everybody has? Are we going to take advantage of projection technology like AccuVane and maybe, uh, maybe others in industrial settings? Or are we going to use uh, digital eyewear like a HoloLens or ODG or Vuzix or Meta or one of, those, uh, one of those great devices? And what's interesting, once you have this map, you can begin to assess different use cases against it. So for example, in order to demonstrate a product to you, um, I can do that quite simply, right? I can do that with spatial tracking, put the Citro pack, as I showed you, right here on the table. Um, I can reuse content that I, that I already have. I can create it uh, quite, quite easily. And everybody can consume it with a, uh, with a tablet or a phone. If we move on to um, in work instructions, now things get a little bit more complicated, right? I'm probably reusing content that I already have. I'd like to present that on digital eyewear because I want my hands free to actually do the, do the work. Um, and I probably want to author that in a way that I can scale. 
I don't want to show you how to replace just one model of the fuel pump. I want to show you how to replace all different variants of the fuel pump, and I don't want to create each one hand, uh, handcrafted, if you will. And then finally, augmented uh, service instructions. So this is a case where things like 3D mapping are incredibly important. We want to show you exactly what to do directly mapped to the object that you, that you, that you may be working on. So just some interesting ways to think about the, um, the sophistication and the effort that's required in order to address each of these, each of these use cases. And then finally, I'll wrap up, um, as the article does, with five questions, strategic choices that you need to make when you are thinking about an AR, um, an AR strategy. So first off, um, what's the opportunity? Um, in some cases, the opportunity uh, presents itself from the bottom up. We have uh, a great customer, Agco. They make industrial equipment, farming equipment, construction equipment. And their AR strategy started because their QA department was using tablets as part of their QA process. And literally, once a day, somebody would shatter a tablet. So they said, well, let's move to a hands-free experience. Let's move to digital eyewear. And that was their first step into AR. We have another company, ABB, right? Huge European industrial company. And they had an executive who, saw the, who had a vision for augmented reality and mandated a corporate initiative from the top down. So you know, the, these, these can happen in, in, in different ways. How will augmented reality differentiate your product? Um, the Wemo example I showed you earlier is a, an, an add-on. It's a, it's a new feature in an existing product. Their core competency is sheet metal manufacturing, but they're using AR to make the operator more productive and provide a more delightful experience for sure. On the other hand, we have um, examples where the product is fundamentally defined by augmented reality. Acuvane is an example I showed you. If you have um, children or nieces and nephews, they, and they're Lego fans, the Lego Nexo Knights uh, brand, the entire line exists for the, for the value of augmented reality. So again, that, that whole product was defined uh, thanks, to, thanks to AR. Cost effectiveness. You know, how much value are you going to, uh, are you going to get out of, um, out of AR? So uh, one, one extreme here is, um, is um, Sysmex. So Sysmex is a company that provides medical devices, blood analyzers, and they have taken advantage of augmented reality to allow their customers to do more self-service than they ever could before. So there's a whole category of procedures that used to require a service technician to go out into the field that now the customer performs themselves. On the other hand, if you think about Lee and Company, they're using AR to make their technicians in the field a little bit more productive. They're, they're taking their aging workforce, they're taking their best experts, they're keeping them centralized in one place, but sharing their knowledge using AR out, in, out into the field. Talent and resources. Should you invest in an AR development organization or should you take advantage of maybe some of you in the room that, that, that provide these, uh, these services? Um, and, and again, there's a whole spectrum here. Lowe's Innovation Labs, Lowe's Home Improvement, they have really embraced augmented reality, both for their employees as well as for their customers. Uh, their AR app is, uh, is pretty delightful, um, and they built that themselves. They've established an innovation lab. They have AR expertise. Um, on the other hand, PACAR, uh, makers of, um, of uh, heavy freight uh, trucking, they have engaged a uh, third party. And there are lots of great third parties out there. Um, One Fire Media and, and Finger Food Productions. Bully Entertainment actually helped us with the, uh, with the HBR app. So there's lots of people out there to provide this and you've, and you've kind of got to make that, that, that trade off. And then the last question is, how will you use AR? How will it impact those that you are communicating with? Um, and there's again a whole spectrum here. So one extreme is Hyundai Motors is researching the elimination of paper owner's manuals. They are exploring the possibility of using AR to present everything that they need in an owner's manual to the end consumer of their car. On the other hand, we have lots of great examples in retail. Um, Ikea, uh, Wayfair, who's, uh, who's here today. I saw Mike Festa earlier. Um, they are taking advantage of AR as another way to communicate their product offering. 
they've got a paper catalog, they've got an online catalog, and they're using AR as a way to, as a way to present the information as well. So just, just some things to think about um, as, uh, as enterprises are beginning their, their, their AR journey. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll wrap up. Um, I do encourage you to, to stop by the PTC booth and grab a copy of the article. Uh, you can get the, uh, the app in, in the various app stores. And you can also get, while you're there, Vuforia Chalk and ThingWorks View. Uh, that's another technology that we'll, uh, we'll talk more about tomorrow. For now, thank you very much, and have a great day. Woo!